We are nearing the end of the year, and that's a happy time for most Android users. It's when the latest major Android updates start rolling out for their devices. Samsung fans in particular don't usually have to wait too long for the latest updates, and this one is no different. It took Samsung only about two months to supply its flagship Galaxy S22 series with the newest Android 13 and One UI 5 user interface. And yes, we cannot deny that One UI 5 is the perfect software update, and that's the one we'll focus on in this video. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Rod with Phone Arena, and today we'll take a look at the latest Android 13 update on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. So basically, we'll be looking at One UI 5. What's so special about One UI 5? Well, as its name implies, it is the fifth version of Android's user interface that is now coming to many, many Android phones. While it's arguably not a groundbreaking update and only introduces just a number of improvements over One UI 4, it's a vital software update nonetheless. Arguably one of the most important features One UI 5 brings to the mix are some major performance optimizations. Indeed, running a device on One UI 5 alongside the same one running an older version of Samsung software feels like a day and night difference as far as overall smoothness goes. But why what else is new with One UI 5? Let's delve in deeper. Do you like colors? I'm colorblind, so that's a genuine question. Anyway, Android 13 expanded on the color palettes Android 12 introduced by greatly increasing the possible color combinations you can use to paint your interface. One UI 5 being fully based on Android 13 now features up to 16 different color palettes that will make the different Android elements match your wallpaper for a nice seamless look. As someone who likes things looking like they belong together unified in both design and colors, I really appreciate how good this customization is and how easy it is to use. Technically Android has always allowed for lock screen customizations, but this functionality was mostly available to phone manufacturers. They kind of picked for you how your lock screen was going to look and whether it will have lots of user customizations or very little, or none at all. It was actually Apple's first iOS 16 beta that encouraged Google and Android phone makers to give some extra attention to lock screen customizations. Anyway, let's get back to One UI 5. With it, you're presented with a brand new lock screen customization experience. You can personalize your lock screen either from the settings app on your phone or by long pressing your lock screen, similarly to how it is on iOS 16. And just like iOS 16, One UI 5 has a number of different clock faces available, with six fonts to choose from plus a very large selection of colors and color combinations. You can also change the positioning of the clock as well as increase or decrease its overall size. Of course, the One UI 5 lock screen also includes widgets, but their numbers are limited to a few stock apps and essential functions. And even those are kind of hidden, only showing up after you tap on the lock screen clock. So their overall utility isn't that impactful, yet. But a few months from now, who knows? If you're a fan of widgets, they probably take up a good portion of your home screen already. That is probably why Samsung introduced smart widgets with One UI 4.1. With this feature, you can stack up to 7 widgets in one place and switch between them by swiping left or right, thus having a more organized home screen and more free space for more icons. And in One UI 5, Samsung has tweaked the way you stack and arrange widgets, making it easier for you to personalize your home screen. Now when you long press a widget with a minimum size of 2 by one you get a new button named Create Stack which lets you choose between the available widgets on your phone and, what else, create a stack with them. I guess we have to mention that Samsung's stacked widgets look a lot like the ones Apple introduced with iOS 14. The one difference is that in One UI, you swipe horizontally, whereas in iOS, you swipe vertically. But hey, the important thing is that we're getting more features. With Android 13, Google introduced a new feature that allows you to select a language for each individual app without changing the entire system's language. In One UI 5, this feature is called App Languages and is located in the General Management tab in Settings. Once you change the app's language and reset it, it should be in the new language you just chose for it. However, we have to make a quick note here. During our tests, we noticed that this language change did not always happen. We presume that this is due to One UI 5 being in beta, and most likely the stable version won't have this issue. On One UI 4, if you need to copy text from a photo, you have to use the built-in text extract feature in the Gallery app. You just take a picture with the camera app and open it in the Gallery application and then tap on the little Bixby Vision button. In One UI 5, however, this process is much more simple now. Every time the camera app detects written text, it will now display a little yellow icon with a T on it which when pressed will take a picture and let you copy the text directly from the viewfinder. Convenient. Let's talk about that camera app real quick. Although it didn't get some huge, surprising new features, it is now more intuitive and helpful. The dedicated pro mode of the camera now offers useful tips for you while adjusting the different settings, which will be useful to both camera geeks and people who are new to this and looking to learn how to make the best of their Galaxy phone's camera. 
Pro Mode is more advanced than your usual point-and-click camera experience, so this is definitely a welcome addition. Android's Quick Share is basically an alternative to Apple's AirDrop, and Samsung has taken some creative liberties with this feature, making it more useful than before. With One UI 5, attempting to share files with Quick Share now lets you make use of a new copy link functionality, which will upload the files you want to share to the Samsung Cloud. A link to them is generated and immediately copied to your clipboard, which lets you easily share it via a message in your favorite texting app. When the person in question opens your link, they will be directed to download your shared files from the cloud. This method is also extremely useful if you want to transfer files from your phone to your computer. However, keep in mind that the generated link and the generated files will be available only for two days, and there is also a daily upload limit of 5GB, which in fairness should be more than enough for most people. With Android 13, Google completely changed the look of the security and privacy settings. There is now a new security dashboard with a scanning feature, which should detect if there are any security issues with your phone, like missing updates, disabled device protection, no lock screen, and so on. Also, the dashboard links to most security and privacy menus, so you can jump between them easily. On One UI in particular, we can say that the dashboard works like a charm, and with Samsung skin on top, it looks quite nice too. Making sure your phone is secure is no longer a confusing chore, and we appreciate it, like I'm sure you will too. This is one of my personal favorites, and I dare say Samsung does multitasking the best. If you often use apps in split screen, you probably know that One UI 4 lets you save split screen layouts on the edge panel. You do that by tapping the little divider between your split screen apps. In One UI 5, however, you can save your desired split screen layouts on your home screen too, in addition to the edge panel. This is super convenient if you already have two apps which you always tend to open in split screen, because now you can just launch them together at any time right from the home screen. In addition, One UI 5 now lets you enter into multi-window mode with just a swipe. All you need to do is enable the feature from the Labs option located in the Advanced Features. Then you simply open an app that supports split screen and swipe up with two fingers from the bottom to the top. There is also a new gesture that allows you to make an app change into a pop-up window. Just open the app and from any top corner swipe to the middle. A lovely feature which used to be on Samsung phones before and is now making a welcome comeback. I'm gonna act like an infomercial host now. Has this ever happened to you? You're on a phone call and you need to write something down. Maybe you'll start looking for a pen, but lo and behold, you haven't handwritten anything in years, so there are no pens nearby. How unfortunate. But now, One UI has the solution for you. If you press the three dots located on the top right corner during a call, you will see a new option called Take Notes. When you tap on it, your Galaxy phone will open a pop-up window of Galaxy Notes so you can write down any important information. Yes, it's time to talk about those usually vague performance optimizations you see listed under every update ever. Basically, we've noticed that One UI 5 feels faster and smoother than One UI 4, and the difference is not small, by the way. Animations, transitions, and simply swiping around the internet Interface feels much smoother now. The previous One UI 4 was an okay update in itself, but it was definitely not optimized as well as it could have been, with micro stutters, animation lag, and overall a slightly disappointing UI experience. But we're happy to report that those issues are now gone. And aside from One UI 5 being much smoother and better optimized, it's also more flexible in terms of performance options. For example, the RAM Plus feature that has been available on most Samsung phones since One UI 4.1 can now be disabled for good. See, this feature allocates a portion of your phone's storage to act as RAM, which does improve the multitasking capabilities of your phone, but it has also been singled out as one of the reasons for sluggish performance in some cases. The reason could be that storage, even fast storage, cannot compete to dedicated RAM in terms of performance. So yes, you may be better off with RAM Plus disabled, and you can choose to disable it now. To disable RAM Plus, open the battery and device care menu in settings, tap on memory, and the RAM Plus option will be on the bottom. Head inside, flick the switch off, reboot your phone, and you're good to go. Of course, if your phone is already running fine, you don't need to do any of this. So there we have it. One UI 5 is definitely an excellent software update, despite the fact that it doesn't change that many aspects of the overall One UI experience. It introduces some deeper optimization options, letting you personalize your Samsung Galaxy phone and really make it your own. And when it comes to software updates, one thing we all expect and generally appreciate are new ways to make our phone feel more unique and our own. One UI passes this test with flying colors and also sets the stage for further customization improvements in the future. 
feature. It has also solidified its leading position in the Android scene as far as customization goes, offering one of the more intuitive and user-friendly user experiences. The second reason we like One UI 5 so much are the optimizations under the hood, which make it run so very smoothly. In conclusion, One UI 5 is an exemplary software update for the times we live in. We don't really expect groundbreaking changes with each and every yearly update, but gradual enhancements and improvements that make sense. And with that in mind, Samsung's One UI 5 is a winner in our book. In any case, that's all for now. Subscribe to Phonerena's YouTube channel here if you haven't yet for more videos like this. Check out phonerena.com for articles, reviews, guides, upcoming Black Friday deals and more, and I'll see you next time.